Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I am actually here for my very first video for honeybee stamps. So I'm super excited about that. Today we're going to be talking about making kind of a snow scene. Um, I'm going to be using this um, large set. I totally love it. It's called Snowbirds. There are so many different um, kinds of birds. The one little bottom one um, with the little scarf and the hat totally stole my heart, but the, I had to use the sled one. I just had to. So I showed you more flaky friends, but I was only going to use the tree from there and then I didn't end up using it because I loved the mountain range so much from the outdoor uh, scene builder stencils that I couldn't bear to cover it up. So here I have just some eclipse masking paper and I'm drawing myself just some general hill shapes. I went ahead and traced those out and then cut them with my scissors. You're going to want to keep all, um, well, both pieces. You're going to need both pieces. So here I'm going to go ahead and stamp down my sledding birdie. I just love how his little feet are right out in front of him. <laughs> He's super cute. Um, and I did stamp it twice in intense black ink from Simon Says Stamp because I'm going to be doing some Copic coloring. I'm also going to stamp myself a mask because I am going to be doing some ink blending on my background as well. And I want to make sure that he's well protected um, from those areas so everything kind of makes sense. So I'm putting that mask on. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the other two masks that I hand cut um, and put those on. You can see on the bottom that it doesn't quite cover the whole card. I have ruined, I cannot even tell you how many cards, by thinking, oh, well, I just won't get any ink on that corner. I always do, whether it's a fingerprint or I drop my little ink blender tool, something always happens. So I will cover that up with just like a random piece of Eclipse I had on my um, desk. But here you want to button up those two that we cut apart. You want to put them right next to each other. There shouldn't be any gapping in between. Fit them together just like a puzzle. Picked out some Distress Oxides. And I'm going to start with Salty Ocean for my blue sky. I wanted this to be pretty light. And I wanted it to fade into white at the bottom. Because that's where I wanted my mountainside to be. And I wanted that to really stand out. So most of the color here is going to be up towards the top. And I'm just... Um, using a really light hand, starting off the page, um, just like you would with any other, you know, ink blending technique that you were doing. Here, I, you can see I tried this once before and my stencil's still dirty, but I don't care because I'm lazy and I'm not going to clean it off twice. That's just how I roll. So I started with the Salty Ocean again, and you'll notice my stencil isn't moving. It's because I have Tombow Mono Multi Glue on the back of all of my stencils. So I started with the Salty Ocean, and then I put on a little bit of the Picked Raspberry to kind of start that purple blend. And then I'm going to go in with the Wilted Violet, um, pretty heavy along the bottom. Here you'll see I'm kind of just like putting my ink blender down and turning it. This is because the hat on my bird was starting to peel up. And I wanted it to be really clean. So instead of going back and forth in the circles... Um, I have found that just the turning it kind of in place still blends the ink, but it doesn't move the mask around as much. I think it was just because oxides are partial dye, partial pigment, and so they're a little bit more wet than um, regular inks, like regular distress ink. So I think that's why it started pulling up because I had so much ink on there. I'm going to pull off that mask and then use it to just kind of create a little mini hill in the back. When we're doing this part of it, you don't want to go really high up. You want there to be a white edge because all you're doing is putting in the shadows of the snow. The snow is white. We're just adding the shadow areas to give it some dimension. So here, again, using a, a pretty light hand, not taking it up too high, still want the tops of those hills to be white. And then I'm going to remove the bottom to just add, you could leave it like this. This would still make sense. These hills would still look like hills, even if you didn't add any extra to the bottom. I just like the way it looks with a little bit along the bottom edge. And because I had a large white area on the right hand side, because I needed that hill to be a little bit steep so he'd have something to sled down. You know, you can't just be out there on flat land trying to sled. That's no fun. So um, I just wanted to fill up that little bottom right-hand corner a little bit more with color. I'm going to go ahead and remove my mask. Um, I'm wearing fairly light-colored nail polish, so I didn't have to be as nervous. But when I have dark nail polish on, I get a little nervous peeling up those masks and I'm going to smear it on my card. Um the Tombo Mono Multi Glue does sometimes leave a little bit of adhesive um, on my card. 
I just kind of feel around for it with my hand. You don't want to rub it off with your finger because we all kind of have dirt um, naturally on your fingers or you, know, you touch your face with makeup or using the ink that will get on your fingers. And I didn't want to get it on my card, so I just use a white eraser. Speaking of white, I am coloring the trim on his hat and the little cotton ball white. And even when you're when you're coloring something white, even then you're still going to add some shadows. So I am adding shadows to kind of the left and right hand side. Um, the left side because that's away from my light source. The right side because the hat's bent over. And then I added a little bit at the bottom to the cotton ball. I picked um, some brighter colors. When I was looking at that mountainside, I was like, what is going to go with, you know, kind of this blue violet and this brighter blue and um, ultimately I settled on yellow. I'm gonna make a yellow bird. Now yellow can sometimes be a little bit difficult to get good blending with because they are so bright it's hard to um, sometimes get good depth and oftentimes the yellow Copic markers are very similar to each other. So you will see here my span of colors is super far apart. So I have a Y, is it a triple? No, it's a quadruple zero to a YO2 to a YO8 to a YR24. And that's to get that depth so I don't feel like I'm just putting the same color over and over and over again. I have a tendency to color as if my light source is in the top right hand corner. So his face and his belly are going to be the darkest parts. Um, the sun is going to hit his back, his little back tail there, and the tip of his wing that is up. So I'm adding shading underneath his hat. I'm adding shading to that left-hand side where there's not going to be any sun. The only place that's a little bit like you might be thinking, Kelly, why are you adding shading there? Is in the middle of his wing. The reason that I'm adding shading to the middle of his wing is because typically that wing is down. Um, and so, but he does have like feathers and, and things in there. Um, so I wanted there to be a little bit of shading that kind of shows that and, and that's for the texture that we're going to add. It, it makes sense to put it there. So once I get out to my darkest color, which is that YR24, it looks a little harsh right now with the blending, but you know, sit tight. Um, we're going to, we're going to work that out. So I went back in with the YO8, moving back out to the lightest color. I left just a small area around his wing and then along his back that's going to be that Y quadruple zero. If you watch my videos, you know I've said your highlights should be minimum, your um, shadow color should be minimum, the two colors you should see the most of are your mid-tones. So if you color with a three color blend, then um, you'll only have one color that you see the most of. If you're like me and you use four, you'll have two. So now to add the texture. I just thought he kind of looked a little bit flat. So um, I went in and I just did really short flicking motions with, I tried it first with just the Y08 and it wasn't enough. I had to go back in with the YR24. And you don't want to take it, you want to take it a little bit to the next color, but not completely covering the next color. And we're going to do that with each one of them. I did just his wing and his tail at first. And I was like, mm, no, he needs some more texture kind of all over. So I'm going to go back in with that same color, that YR24, and I think it's probably easier to see here just because there's a larger area. I'm just doing short little flicks. He's not a long feathered bird, so doing long ones wouldn't make sense. And I'm going to bring the Y08 into the YR24 and into the area that's shaded in the Y02. So that way there's good blending and it kind of flows. I'm going to take the Y02 and put it into the area that has the Y08 and into the area that has the Y uh, quadruple zero. So I was happy with the way he came out. I love how the little flicks look like his feathers are like blowing back as he is just cruising down this hill. Um, and then I decided I was going to go with some violets for his sled. Ski. Ski? It's a ski. Pretty sure it's a ski. Is it a sled? I don't know. You tell me what you think. Anyway, um, so I went with violets because I already had it in the card, okay? I already had it back there um, in the mountain range. But also because violet is yellow's complementary color, which means, you know, they're going to look good together. Like, you don't even have to work at it. They just automatically look like, hey, we're friends. Look how nice we look together. So don't make it harder than it has to be. For the shading on the, I think it's a sled. Yeah, because there's he's not strapped in. With the ski, you'd be strapped in. I'm calling it a sled, folks, and moving on with my life. So anyway, for the shading with the sled, um, he, it, it is round. So for the 
top of it, the shading is going to come up and the lightest part is going to be the top. For the underneath of it, it's going to be darker where it's kind of like curled over. And it's also going to be darker where he's sitting. So I'm adding some shadows in there as well. And underneath his tushy all the way to the back. At first, I just colored in the side with the lightest color and then let it go, moved on to the hat. But we're going to go back to that because I didn't really love it. So for the hat, it is curled over the um, the kind of the back. So we're going to add shading underneath there. And then you'll see on the left-hand side, I'm going to start to pull some of the shading out in kind of like a triangle shape. The reason I'm doing that is to give his hat a little bit more shape. So I'm going to add that shading in kind of like a triangular um, section. So it's going to look like his hat's kind of floppy in the front as well as in the back. So it doesn't it look like it has a lot of structure um, because he's, you know, it's whipping behind him. We're flying down this hill. Um, so, and then I'm going to leave two lighter areas right above um, the darkest shaded parts. And that will, again, help um, give that dimensional look. I colored it all in purples, but then I felt like it kind of blended into that mountain range. So in order to make it kind of pop forward, I'm just going to go over the whole thing with an RV04. I didn't get rid of any of my shading here. I just changed the tone of it. So don't be afraid to do that with colors that um, play nice together. Like don't put a red over a brown or anything, or a red over a green, you'll get brown. But you can put a pink over a purple or um, an orange over a pink or a ye an orange over a yellow that will all play nice together um, and work and then you don't have to redo the shading. I like to add details with white gel pens. Watch my videos. This isn't a shock to you. I think it's something cute, and especially since I am more of a clean and simple card maker, something that you can do to add detail. So I gave him um, some polka dots on his hat, and then I always outline all of my images with a Copic Safe writing marker. Writing pen. Marker? Pen. It's a pen. What is wrong with me? Um, here, I realized that I didn't really add any shading underneath him, and he would be kind of creating this trail as he was coming down this hill. So I pulled out the same C1s that I used for the white, and I'm just adding kind of shading directly underneath the sled and then behind it where he would create that track. I did want to make note, you notice that, that when this section of the video started, it was a little bit yellow. I don't know what's going on with my camera. It was doing something weird. It like froze and then shut itself off. And then when I started it, it was kind of yellow. But once I got my hands in there, it went back out to white. I don't know what was up with that. Um, here, I'm just blending out that shading with a, a light B marker. And now I've put my mask back on. Put my mask back on because we're going to create this snow scene, which I love. It has so much texture. This is way too much white acrylic paint, by the way. You do not need this much. But anyway, I'm using white acrylic paint, which I think I bought this bottle for like 59 cents at Walmart, um, I don't know, like five years ago. And I'm also using Perfect Pearls, which I did not buy at Walmart, but they are well worth the investment. I love them. I use them on everything. So anywho, I like to put a couple of little droplets down on my craft mat and then mix that into the Perfect Pearl powder. And now I'm just going to kind of sprinkle this on. I'm using a number two round brush from the Silver Brush Company. And I'm just going to splatter it on. The reason that I remasked my bird is because I didn't want it to be too much in front of him. I didn't want to completely cover up all that coloring. Here, I'm using a really stiff bristle brush. And I tapped it into the paint and then I tapped it off a couple of times. And I'm going to use this to create like the snow kicking up behind his sled as he comes down. And I didn't want it to be too much. Again, I wanted to have a little bit more control. And I'm doing that by leaving the mask on. For the actual snow and creating that texture all over the card, I am taking the acrylic paint and my paintbrush right up against a, um, a block. And then that gives me tons of control. I can see where it's going to go uh, and just flick it against the side. Now that I've pulled that uh, mask off, I am going to go back in and just kind of make sure I get some paint on the edges of his sled. You know, the snow would be in front of that. It would be, uh, you know, in front of his tail. And then there would also be snow in front of him. I'm just trying to control the amount so that it doesn't cover up how just super cute he is, right? For the Perfect Pearls, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back in and, again, just using a little bit more of a minimal amount. For the sentiment, I think this is super cute. It's part of the same set. It says, um, snow much fun. 
And uh, I'm going to be stamping that in black Simon Says Stamp ink. I just like this ink for my sentiments. And I opted to put, I messed around with the sentiment for so long, guys. I opted to put it in the bottom right-hand corner because um, I had so much hill area and the, I didn't want to cover up that mountaintop. And then my camera was not nice again and it shut off. So basically all I did was just add some clear sequins to kind of accent that sentiment. And then I like to top them off with um, some glossy accents so I know they're not going to move in the mail. And then that's the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I will be seeing you once a month on the Honeybee channel. And I can't wait for the next one. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye.